we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. In what are they created equal? Is it in size, strength, understanding, figure, moral or, or civil accomplishment, or situation of life? Every ploughman knows that they are not created equal in any of these. All men, it is true, are equally created, but what is this to the purpose? It certainly is no reason why the Americans should turn rebels, because the people of Great Britain are their fellow creatures, i.e. are created as well as themselves. It may be a reason why they should not rebel, but most indisputably is none why they should. They therefore have introduced their self-evident truth, either through ignorance or by design, with a self-evident falsehood. Since I will defy any American rebel or any of their patriotic retainers here in England to point out to me any two men throughout the whole world of whom it may with truth be said that they are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. The meaning of these words the Congress appears not at all to understand, among which are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Let us put some of these words together. All men are endowed by their Creator with the unalienable right of life. How far they may be endowed with this unalienable right, I do not yet say. But before I do, these gentry affirm to themselves an unalienable right of talking nonsense. Was it ever heard, since the introduction of blunders into the world, that life was a man's right? Life, or animation, is of the essence of human nature, and is that without which one is not a man, and therefore to call life a right is to betray a total ignorance of the meaning of words. A living man, i.e. a man with life, hath a right to a great many things. But to say that a man with life hath a right to be a man with life is so purely American, that I believe the texture of no other brain upon the face of the earth will admit the idea. Whatever it may be, I have tried to make an idea out of it, but I admit I am unable. Prior to my having any right at all as a man, it is certain that I must be a man. And it follows, a man I certainly cannot be if I have no life, and therefore if it is said that I have a right to life, then the word I must signify something without life, and consequently something without life must be supposed to have a property, which without life it is not possible it can have. But they say, all men have not only a right to life, but an unalienable right. The word unalienable signifies that which is not alienable, and that which is not alienable is that which cannot be transferred so as to become another's, so that their unalienable right is a right which cannot transfer to a broomstick or a cabbage stalk, and because they cannot transfer their own lives from themselves to a cabbage stalk, therefore they think it is absolutely necessary that they should rebel. And, out of a, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind, allege this as one of the causes which impels them to separate themselves from those to whom they owe obedience. The next assigned cause and ground of their rebellion is that every man hath an unalienable right to liberty. And here the words, as it happens, are not nonsense, but then they are not true. Flaws there are in America, and where there are flaws, their liberty is alienated. If the Creator hath endowed men with an unalienable right to liberty, 
no reason in the world will justify the abridgment of that liberty, and a man hath a right to do everything that he thinks proper without control or restraint. And upon the same principle there can be no such thing as servants, subjects, or government of any kind whatsoever. In a word, every law that hath been in the world since the formation of Adam gives the lie to this self-evident truth, as they are pleased to term it. Because every law, divine or human, that is or hath been in the world is an abridgment of man's liberty. Their next self-evident truth and ground of rebellion is that they have an unalienable right to the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness is an unalienable right. This surely is outdoing everything that went before. Put it into English, the pursuit of happiness is a right with which the Creator hath endowed me, and which can neither be taken from me, nor can I transfer it to another. Did ever any mortal alive hear of taking a pursuit of happiness from a man? What they possibly can mean by these words, I admit, is beyond my comprehension. A man may take from me a, a horse, or a cow, or I may alienate either of these from myself, as I may likewise anything that I have. But how that can be taken from me, or alienated, which I have not, must be left for the solution of some unborn Oedipus.